Hey everyone, it's Ross, and this is Fruit Talk, episode three, where we talk a lot about fruits and vegetables and all kinds of things that I'm growing, and we answer a lot of people's questions and comments. Uh, you know, talk about things that are going on in the in the world, uh, all related to fruit. So, uh, welcome. If you're new to this uh, series, we're going to be doing this every Wednesday at nine o'clock Eastern. And I am Ross Ratty, your host, and uh, let's get into it. So. In this video, I want to answer a lot of people's questions because it's that time of the year here uh, for a lot of us. The winter is coming, and people are want to do uh, one or two things. They want to root fig cuttings, and they want to protect their fig trees in the wintertime. And clearly, um, I can't answer every single thing in a video, but I'm going to try my best to get to all the questions that I'm commonly getting and put them in this video for you guys. We're also going to mention my um, spreadsheet here. And this spreadsheet is actually in the description of every single video I've ever done. And I talk about it a lot, but for some reason, um, it doesn't get, I think, enough attention. So I want to talk about this first. We're actually renovating it a bit because we're adding new flavor categories here to the flavor groups. There's many flavors of figs, for those of you who don't know. There's uh, sugar figs, there's berry figs, and there's honey figs. And those are the three main groups, I would say. And then after that, you kind of get a lot of more interesting flavors, some that really have no uh, no comparison for me. Like Sephiro, I have an, it's a very unique uh, flavor to it. Suwadi, another, another very unique fig. Rivera Branca so far has been quite unique. And I've just added in different categories. As time has gone on, I've tasted more figs. So I'm renovating this, but, you know, It'll be interesting to see how this one comes out, and I think I'm going to do another Flavor of Figs video for you guys. I did one last winter. We talked all about the flavors of figs, a similar format to what I'm doing right now. And you can go back and watch the previous video if you want. Um, I also have a, a sheet here I'm going to be putting a video on uh, very soon. And this is the top choices that I recommend of figs for rainy, humid, or short season climates. And the list is quite long. Um, and it, you know, it, I really have a really nice list here for you guys that I think uh, a lot of you that live near me or live in a climate similar, whether if you're in Seattle, England, anywhere along the East Coast, I think this is probably a very valuable list for those people. Um, but yeah, let's get into these questions here. Go to gel asked me, What's up, Ross? Uh, I just got my heating mat, and I'm using a 24-inch wide LED grow lights for his fig cuttings. And he just started rooting them uh, in the beginning of September. They look like plants, but five of them have died from rot. He's using black magic potting soil now. Um, can I feed my cuttings now? That's what he really wants to know. Can, I, can he feed them? Well, first off, if your cuttings have rot, you've watered them too much or your soil is too heavy. So I don't know what black magic potting soil is, but whatever you root fig cuttings in, or most of the things you root things in, should be a soil conditioner. They should not be a potting soil. Potting soils are not well draining enough. They have too much organic matter for the most part, and that rot uh, kills your cuttings. You know, too much water will kill them. Um, I doubt if you just started rooting them in September that they look like plants as well. You know, um, that's only a month and a half of time. Really not a whole lot of time for you to have a nice plant. Um, especially if you've stuck it into a one gallon pot, you're looking at at least three months before you have a really strong plant. Uh, and even then it's tough because you got to transplant it. You got to adjust it to the sun, adjust it to the humidity. Um, and you can definitely water them. I mean, uh, you can definitely fertilize them. You can fertilize them from, you know, as soon as they start to get roots, as soon as they start to get leaves, that's when it, it's kind of useful. But you want to really dilute the fertilizer for something that small. Um, any salt, which is what happens when you fertilize uh, with a synthetic fertilizer, the chemical reaction that comes out of the fertilizer is salt. And that salt can burn uh, fig... Um, the roots of the fig, the fig cuttings very easily, especially because they're so dainty and um, they're not very strong. So I don't really recommend it, but 
you can if you want. Yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world, but just dilute it a lot. Um, I also wanted to talk about the uh, let's you know let's keep on the cutting thing here. So this is the video I did on cuttings. And we're gonna have another video next Sunday, I believe, this Sunday coming up on the rooting environment itself. What you guys need, like lights and humidity, temperature, all that stuff which will answer a lot of people's questions that I think they're asking me right now. Um, so, Robert asked, will 50% humidity cause problems? No. Um, it just is a problem when you take the cuttings out of the rooting environment and put them somewhere else, like outside when the springtime comes. What's the outdoor humidity versus the indoor humidity? And is that difference going to be enough to shock them so much that they're going to die? You know what I mean? So I think a lower humidity is obviously better because the outdoor humidity where I live is usually 50% or higher. So if I'm at 50%, they don't really need to get adjusted to the humidity. They just need to get adjusted to the sunlight. Uh, problem solved, right? Let's see. What other questions here? Uh, yes, it is a very good idea to bury your fig cuttings a little bit deeper because at every single node they will produce roots or have the chance to produce roots at those nodes. Um, here's a big question I'm getting. So you don't have to overwinter the cuttings. Is it safe here in the fall uh, because the fig trees are starting to drop their leaves and I have a cutting that somebody told me I should just overwinter it like the adult trees. Should I let it grow during the winter? Do not let your fig trees, your small fig trees, continue growing throughout the winter. There is a high chance you will kill them. Um, there's a very low chance you'll kill them by putting them in storage with your other fig trees. Let them go dormant, store them with your other trees, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've killed a tree because I overwintered it. I've tried to let it grow the entire uh, the entire uh, winter time. It's a lot of plants usually in that case you're trying to keep up with. If you get lazy with watering, it can die. So I don't recommend it. It's not really a huge benefit to do so. In fact, it also can be a negative because you really want your fig trees, which are deciduous trees, to actually go dormant. That's pretty important. Um, Joseph's mentioning his soil here. He says it drains really good. That's very key. Vote gel if you're still watching or if you are watching this video. Okay. Now the winter timeline and prep that I mentioned here, this video we did last Saturday, is also very important. And um, I think a lot of questions were cropped up from this which are going to really be answered in future videos because this is all going to be in a series of videos just banging them out you know one after the other on this particular topic i give you guys the timeline what exactly is going to happen yada 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 but the millennial gardener asked me did you did i get a frost last night the answer is no i did not i probably will get a frost tomorrow which is thursday um and in that case, I think I probably will because the temperature is going to be at nighttime like 35 or may, maybe even, actually, I'm sorry, it's like 33, I believe, is the temperature that's coming up here. Let's see what it says. Yeah, Thursday, a low of 34. So, you know, 35. So I think it's likely that maybe we'll get one here. If not, it probably will take us all the way into November 1st, which is usually our average first frost, which would be great. I want that to last longer. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Someone's asked me about the cutting sale. I did a video on this. Specifically, the cuttings will be taken in November, and they will not be sold until November. Um, and they will be shipped out in early December.
Okay, so this guy is in um, 10B, Southern California. He has a potted brown fig with fruit on it. It is late October. Suggestions? You can leave your tree outside all winter. You don't have to do a damn thing. <laughs> you have the perfect climate for growing figs. Congrats, and uh, will you let me live with you? Um, let's see here. People want to buy trees. Okay. This person wants to know how frequently I'm going to be posting the videos. Well, as I do it, I'll post the video because I can't film the video on me pruning a tree if I'm not pruning the tree. You know what I mean? So they'll come out hopefully one after the other as they happen. Um, and that's going to go well into November because if you saw the timeline video, um, you know, we just have a lot more time. We have a lot more time left of the season. Uh, not of the season, but until I actually put these things away for good. So there's a lot more to do. I still have to spray them with the horticultural oil. They still haven't got hit by a single frost. So three frosts later, after they actually get hit with the frost, then I will put them away. Um, and, you know, before all that happens, there needs to be some pruning that, that is done. So there's a lot more things that still have to happen. And if they didn't happen yet, I can't film it. I can't show it to you guys. So this was really... A, I think a good video for everybody so that you could fully understand what was going to happen before it happened for you because not everybody lives where I live you know what I mean so I've done videos on pruning fig trees I've done videos on storage you just have to go back you know uh, let me show you guys Let's see here my channel and then you can just search in here, overwintering. So here's a video I did overwintering my potted fruit trees. We did it in the greenhouse here. I also overwintered my potted plants uh, that are more hardy. I left them outside all winter time. For in this one video. second. So maybe another year, solution. What I, did. I just covered them all with straw. And I'll do that again this year. Do another video on the same, pretty much the same thing. This one is me moving them all into the greenhouse, and you can see, look how many trees are in the greenhouse just piled up. That's exactly what's going to happen around Thanksgiving again this year. For one. So, um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, I've also stored them in different locations. All right, I've stored them in my sunroom here. And you can see in my sunroom, that didn't happen. Just a uh, crap ton of trees. Um, I've also done videos on pruning. Pruning container fig trees, the basics. This was video last year. And uh, the thing is about this video, though, is I didn't show you guys the process of me actually cutting the wood. But I showed you what the trees all look like, all pruned afterwards, all snipped, all ready to go, the shape that I wanted, and how all that is going to work out for next year. Then we did a video in the beginning of this season on my most important tip for productive fig trees. And in this video, I'm in the greenhouse in the very beginning of the spring, and we're talking about the new growth that comes out of the wood. So we had pruned them in the fall, we put them away all winter time, and then in the spring, they start sending out new shoots. Well, I like to be selective because I believe that if you select the number of shoots that you want that can grow strong and healthy throughout the year, you'll actually get more fruit that way. So this is also a form of pruning that I've done, and uh, we did a video on it. So hopefully uh, this can really put this to rest for you guys, and um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fruit Talk, which is up episode three. Hopefully in the future, guys, 
we can come at you with uh, some more interesting things that have been going on in the in the world that I've thought were interesting or somewhat related to fruit. And we can talk about that. All right. So uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, come back here every Wednesday at nine o'clock. This is what, exactly what we're going to do. So thank you guys, and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.